Hey, Larkin Rose here. I wanted to talk a little bit about the fact that the words that people use have a big impact on what they think. And imprecise language leads to imprecise thought, which leads to more imprecise language, and it goes around in circles. Uh, the concept I want to talk about today, the, the term I want to talk about, is the market. You'll hear a bunch of people say, well, I don't trust the market to handle caring for the poor or roads or defense or protection or, or whatever it is. And when I ask people who say that, well, what do you think the market is? I mean, you talk as if it's this weird, magical, floaty, ethereal thing that magically makes th some things happen and apparently isn't good at magically making other things happen. So what do you think it is? And invariably, people can't really say and they can't really define the terms they use. All the term the market means is human beings interacting voluntarily. And it does have an economic connotation, like it's about economic trade um, specifically. But other than that, it just means lots of individuals, each looking out for their own interests and each deciding who to, who to deal with, who to trade with, who to cooperate with um, on an economic basis. And that's all it means. So when somebody says, I don't trust the market to do such and such, what they're saying is, I don't trust voluntary interaction to result in a good enough outcome. Well, what does that logically imply? If, you don't, if you're not okay with voluntary interaction, what else is there? Involuntary interaction, which is force and violence and threats. So when somebody says, I don't trust the market, literally what that obviously logically implies is I want to initiate force into the situation. I want to violently control people because I think if they're left in freedom, the results won't be as good as if they're forced to do the way things the way I think they should do them. And of course, that's all government ever is, is forcing people to do things or, or not do certain things. But so for the people who use the term market, I would love it if they would at least start by being honest and precise. And when you say, I don't trust the market to do this, say, I don't think people should be allowed to be free because the outcome won't be okay. I want them violently controlled in, and forced to make the decisions I think they should make and to behave in the way I think they should behave because it'll have a better outcome. And for obvious reasons, statists don't like to say it that way because then they sound like thuggish control freak lunatics. But that's what it means when somebody says, well, we can't trust the market to do that. It's, we can't trust free people to accomplish whatever it is, roads or caring for the poor or whatever. So I want my agenda violently imposed on everybody. So that's basically the point about the, the term, the terminology and the, the, the concept. But what I specifically wanted to talk about today is the, the practical side of the market. When people say, I don't trust the market, you know, people left in freedom, I'm not sure they would care for the poor, I'm not sure they could make a road, I'm not sure they would, you know, trade honestly and all these things. And it just so happens that I happen to be privileged enough <laughs> to spend a year having first-hand experience with the market in action in just about the worst imaginable situation to see how the market can handle it. The situation is this, you have a very limited number of people in a box. And in this box, they have no privacy. Their stuff can be randomly searched whenever. They're under constant surveillance. All trade is specifically banned. They're not allowed to do economic trade of any kind. They're not even allowed to gift things to each other. Uh, I'm speaking of federal prison, where I got to live for a year. Now, I was in minimum security. Uh, if you want the whole story of that, you can go read my book, Kicking the Dragon. Um, I was in a cage because I didn't send pieces of paper to the IRS, uh, but that's, that's another topic, topic entirely. But I got to see the market in action in the worst imaginable scenario. You couldn't make a better challenge to the market than say, all right, we're going to stick you in a box. You have no privacy. We're going to search your stuff whenever you want, whenever we want. You're not even allowed, to, you basically can't have private property. There's a very short list of things you're allowed to personally possess, but it, it's, it's not it's even it's even more strict than, than state prisons, as I understand it. You're not allowed to have your own clothes. You're not allowed to have your own almost anything. Like, there's a few little things you're allowed to have. Other than that, you're not allowed to possess anything. And you're not allowed to gift anything to anybody. And you're not allowed to engage in trade at all. You're not allowed to have currency. You know, not only 
uh, you can't you have dollars and cents and that that type of stuff you can't trade it all in any currency you're not allowed to do that at all you can look it up in the the federal prison rules so this is the scenario now you'd think if the market couldn't handle society it probably couldn't handle this situation either where it's all economic trade is banned you have no privacy rights and you're under constant surveillance well let me describe what actually happens in the uncontrolled decentralized anarchistic economic system that automatically magically appears in every prison in the country you quickly get a booming economy in all sorts of, of goods and services that including illegal stuff I mean you can get drugs <laughs> in prison if you want to and I was only in a minimum security place but I there were people there who had formerly been in medium security and high security and they said it's the same at the higher places you know it's the situation isn't the same but you can still get stuff and there's still trade everywhere you know you can get a tattoo you can pay someone to, to, to do a tattoo which is totally against the rules but it happens all the time um, you can pay people to do your laundry which you're totally not allowed to but it happens all the time uh, in fact it would be a complete disaster in prison if they actually abided by the rules it would be this inefficient disaster uh, because the example of the laundry you know they have a few machines if everybody lined up at the machines when the the normal work shift ended uh, it would never get done so somebody says well I have a different work shift and if you'll give me two Snickers I'll do your laundry for you know however much and it works perfectly and so I want to quickly cover some of the concerns people have about what would happen if we didn't have government one is we couldn't have money we couldn't have currency if there wasn't a government printing it and making it and regulating the value of it uh, first of all you cannot have a big group of people and not have currency you can't stop it even if you tell them you're not allowed to have currency at all and we're going to constantly monitor you they will still find a way to have currency um, back when you could have cigarettes cigarettes were one of the main um, currencies in prison now it's mainly postage stamps but there are other things there are little packages of, of a certain kind of food I forget what they were called um, that are used as currency as long as enough people want them it doesn't matter if everybody wants them because you know you can trade with somebody else and if it's portable and easily divisible and all the things that make a good currency it will become a currency and it's important to point out that this isn't it's not like all the inmates sat down and said we have to come up with a way to trade it just instantly automatically happens you can't even stop it from happening so there's no master plan nobody came up with here's how we're going to do it people just figured out well you have something I want and I have something you want and you know either I can try to kill you and take it which doesn't usually work out well for either one of us or I'll give you this if you give me that it's just it's naturally what human beings do and they quickly figure out if we have a thing that we they both sort of value we'll trade using that instead of trying to coincidentally find you know a situation to barter where you happen to have exactly what I want and I happen to have exactly what you want so we trade so currency currencies happen naturally and nobody's regulating the value in fact the whole notion of regulating the value of a currency is is inherently bogus all value means is how much somebody values it how much they want it and so to say I regulate the value of this is just as stupid as me going up to you and say well how much do you want that sandwich pretty much well I'm gonna regulate the value of the sandwich and you now want it three times as much as you just did it just it's insane you can't you don't regulate how much somebody else wants something and that's all value means so but in prison it's automatic it's, it corrects itself people decide how much they think a stamp is worth if you say I'll give you a stamp for 50 Snickers they'll say no it's not worth that people decide on an individual basis and it's a, a naturally correcting system that people figure out how much something is worth and they trade back and forth there's no central body there's no regulatory agency there's no federal reserve it just happens and if you say you're not allowed to do it it happens anyway and if you take away what they're trading with they'll trade with something else and I would also point out that this is among a crowd that includes people you know some people who are not the most educated and some people who are not the most intelligent and some people who are not the most honest uh, and still in the harshest situation you instantly get a booming economy now that, that brings up the second concern of well if you don't have government people would just defraud you and they'd get, get away with it and they could do anything they wanted funny thing about that in prison it's a self-correcting system you know, among criminals now a lot of people are in, are in prison for crimes that weren't at all deceptive or immoral and didn't hurt anybody 
um, victimless crimes, but there are people in there for credit card fraud and stuff that, you know, you don't necessarily trust them. But there's this beautiful, amazing phenomenon when it comes to trading stuff that if you get a reputation as someone who doesn't follow through on his promises or rips people off, word gets around and nobody will trade with you. And then no matter how nasty or heartless or selfish you are, you quickly learn either I have to go back and fix the things that, you know, the ways I rip people off or I don't get to play the game. I don't get to trade with anybody and then I'm just stuck by myself and can't get anything I can't make myself. So there's this automatic correcting mechanism built right in and there's no enforcement. You know, at higher, at higher security levels, the enforcement might be, if you go back on your word, you get shanked. Um, but in minimum security where I was, there's none of that. It, it's not, you know, scary prison movie version of prison. It's idiotic, stupid waste of time walking around doing nothing um, version of prison. Um, but it's the same basic principle regardless of, of security level where people don't trade with you if you're not trustworthy. And it doesn't matter if you're good. And, and this is the thing about profit. And recently, Russell Brand, oh, I think profit is a filthy word. Well, that's because you're an idiot and you don't understand economics in the slightest. All profit means is it benefits somebody in some way. And every time two people trade voluntarily, they both profited or it wouldn't have happened. You know, if you go to a store and you, here's five bucks, can I have that sandwich? You did the trade because you wanted the sandwich more than you wanted your five bucks. You know, this is basic economics. He sold you the sandwich because he wanted your five bucks more than he wanted the sandwich that he just made. So you do the trade, you're both better off, you both profited, yeehaw. And that motive, like you didn't go there to be nice to him to, I just want to make sure that you're making a living, you don't care, you want a sandwich. But you know that to get that sandwich, you have to give him something. So both people benefit, even if both people involved are completely greedy and selfish and couldn't care less about the other person. It's the same thing in prison. Even if people are heartless and greedy and nasty, they know that you know you can only get so far by trying to violently control people because someone's going to do it back at you. But if you have something they want and they have something you want, you can trade. And so trade naturally leads to peaceful coexistence because if you don't play that game, other people won't let you play in the game called the market. So you get this amazing self-correcting system in the, you know, the, the harshest system, you, uh, harshest situation you can possibly imagine. So when somebody says, well, I, I don't trust to, to take care of the poor. Oh, that's another thing worth mentioning. Um, as soon as I went into prison, as soon as you walk in, there are people there um, to show you around and show you how everything works and give you what you need until you have money in, in the commissary to get your own. And guess what? They don't work for the prison. They're inmates. The administration couldn't possibly care less. They're just idiotic, bureaucratic buffoons. But the people who are living in there, and I immediately noticed, they're nicer than the general public. That's kind of a bit of a surprise. And part of that's just the, you know, the sort of weird artificial camaraderie of, well, we're all in a box, so it's, it's going to work better if we're kind of nicer to each other. But when people need something, other people help out because then it just kind of works better. So you even get private charity, even when charity is banned, you're not allowed to give somebody anything in prison. The rules say you can't gift anything to anybody. And as soon as you walk in, people are saying, you know, here's, here's shampoo and a towel and this until you have money from the commissary to buy your own and, and here's some snacks and stuff and whatever. So all these things naturally happen among a group of people who you wouldn't expect to be that honest or intelligent about it in a situation that you wouldn't expect to be able to get away with trade at all because it's all banned and currency is banned. And it works amazingly well. So anybody who thinks that, and, and consider the alternative. Some say, well, I don't trust these people to interact freely and have a good result. So I think we should take one prisoner and tell him he gets to violently control everyone else and tell them what trades to make. Because that's the government answer. That's the involved, that's the I don't trust the market. I want the government to do it, which means I want a centralized ruling class to force everybody to do it a certain way. You really think it would work better in prison? Okay, this is the prisoner who's in charge. He gets to violently dominate everybody else. I'm sure that's going to work wonderfully and benefit all of us just beautifully. It's just an idiotic idea. And in that context, nobody would suggest that. But when it comes to government, because people are mushy in their heads about concepts, they say, I, I think we need government to do that. And what they're really saying is there's this whole bunch of people, and if they interact voluntarily, I'm not sure we could get the desired outcome. 
But if we take this guy and this guy and this guy and let them violently dominate everybody else, then we'll suddenly have a much better outcome. It's just stupid. And to anybody who thinks that people interacting voluntarily cannot result in a, a stable currency, cannot uh, result in a, a varied, very effective, very efficient uh, system of trade, uh, go get yourself arrested and spend a while in prison and you will see that there is no force on earth that can stop the market because people naturally interact and trade and do things for mutual benefit even if they're nasty, even if they're dishonest. Uh, and that's not to say there aren't examples of people stealing stuff and, and doing nasty stuff. Of course, that's true inside and outside and, and everywhere. But to me, it was a, I didn't expect it to work that well. And I was already, you know, free market anarchist. And I was amazed by how efficiently this group of complete strangers stuck in a box under constant surveillance with no privacy instantly created an amazing decentralized, unplanned, anarchistic black market. So if you, if you don't think it can work out in the real world, we'll re if you don't think it can work in a free society, go see it work in a cage and then tell me that you don't trust the market.